Hello and welcome to week 9 of PubH612. Today we will discuss program quality and fidelity, as well as managerial and contextual considerations. And while this week is week 9 of the course, this presentation will cover the Issel and Wells Chapter 10. The learning objectives for this week are to explain the different types of accountability to which program managers are held, to understand quality and performance approaches, and to take managerial actions to assure implementation fidelity. Program managers are accountable for many aspects of a program. Here in Table 10-1, you can see the six different types of accountability which program managers are held to and how they are related to the organizational plan, the service utilization plan, and to the effect theory. Each area of accountability requires some thought, planning, and oversight. Efficiency accountability means that the program is delivered with an efficient use of resources. Fiscal accountability is the extent to which resources are managed according to the budget. And legal accountability means that staff members act in accordance with local, state, and federal laws and that professional licensure guidelines are followed. Two types of accountability are related to the service utilization plan, coverage and service delivery accountability. Coverage relates to the program reaching the intended participants and service delivery relates to the intervention being provided as planned. Lastly, impact accountability relates to the effect theory and is concerned with the program having intended outcomes on the intended audience. Quality assurance requires using the minimum acceptable requirements for processes and standards for outputs as the criteria for taking corrective action. Quality assurance can be an important component of ensuring that program interventions are delivered as planned and according to standards. When a quality assurance team finds errors, they then can work to bring processes back into compliance. One method for doing this is called continuous quality improvement, CQI. CQI was adopted in the 1990s by healthcare organizations as a way to reduce costs and improve the quality of services. It addresses problems by focusing on systems and it recognizes that employees are sometimes the best resources for potential solutions. It's also a data-driven process. Six Sigma and Lean methodology are two proprietary systems which can be used to examine organizational processes using statistical and scientific tools. Evaluations of health programs can be impacted by the presence of CQI or TQM. First, it may be easier to involve employees in the evaluation because they are used, they are used to using data for improvement and data analysis methods. Staff should also be familiar with fishbone diagrams, PERT charts, and control charts, and therefore they should have a better sense of developing a program theory. The methods used in quality improvement can help with designing process evaluations. And lastly, quality improvement can help in identifying problems with service utilization plan implementation or organiz organizational plan deficiencies. There isn't a consensus on the definition of the term performance measures, but the general understanding is that they are indicators of process, output, or outcomes that have been developed for use as standardized indicators 
by health programs or organizations. Here are some agreed upon criteria for good performance measures. First, they must be evidence-based. They need to be easy for practitioners to interpret and actionable by improvement committees. They should also be valid and reliable and specify who's in the numerator and denominator. And lastly, they must be feasible. This table 10-3 shows the key elements generally used in performance measurement. Performance measures vary across accrediting bodies and performance measurement systems. But here are some of the key terms and definitions. Once you've collected data about program processes, it's time to compare the monitoring data with the targets which were stated in the process objectives. Ideally, each time frame, amount of action by which participant or program staff will be compared with the actual program accomplishments and recorded in a process evaluation. Other things to consider when interpreting implementation data is that attention to coverage is important because if the program was delivered to people who weren't intended to receive the intervention, it may look as if the intervention had no effect. Once you explore coverage of your intervention more closely, you, be, you can begin to parse out if overcoverage or undercoverage were problems for the program. When reviewing implementation data, the gap between benchmarks and actual program achievements Getting staff insight on what caused the gap can also be very useful in helping to understand what is going on and where problems lie. Another thing to consider is the extent to which all program components were provided. Findings from process evaluations can spark two possible types of actions. Implementation, implementation focused actions or process theory focused actions. Imp implementation focused actions may include managerial actions such as seeking more funding to expand the program or updating the needs assessment to better fine tune an ongoing program. Process theory focused actions can be taken in response to an evaluation and focus on revising or modifying aspects of process theory rather than the interventions themselves. So for example, you would change the clinic hours to better reach the population, but not abandon immunizing the population. Motivating staff members to make the changes that have been identified in quality improvement or performance management data can be challenging. The natural inclination may be for staff to feel criticized and become defensive. However, if you win over a central staff member and hope they convince other staff to get on board with the changes, that's one tactic which could work. Another tactic could be to use the theory of group formation, which includes forming, storming, norming, and performing and allow motivated and in professional staff to self-organize. Sometimes it's not appropriate to make changes, for instance, when everything is working and you're meeting your targets on time. Another time it's not appropriate to make changes is if key stakeholders are resistant or you don't have enough money in your budget to complete the change. Other reasons not to change an evaluation are if process data are ambiguous and if the program is replicating another successful program and the outcome data are not yet available. A formative evaluation is an assessment of processes and early outcomes and is typically done during the early stages of implementation. It is performed on new or experimental programs as well as programs which are under political scrutiny. Because formative evaluations are conducted before the entire program has been implemented, they can be used to diagnose problems early on and correct course. 
They often use several methods, both qualitative and quantitative. The key takeaways for this week are that managers are accountable for program success. And continuous quality improvement and total quality management, as well as performance measures, can be used by managers to improve the implementation and management of programs. And lastly, how you decide to manage group processes and engage with staff will determine the quality and sometimes fidelity of the interventions that you're implementing. Here on this slide and this slide are additional resources that you can review during the week. Please check Blackboard for additional materials and I'll see you next week.